fever symptoms like bradyhemia and uh, non motor symptoms like depression or the cognitive decline. <coughs> so why do we analyze the neuroimaging data? Because neuroimaging data uh, such as MRI and DTI uh, the indicate the functional or the structural change of the brain with the progression of the Parkinson's disease. And uh, recently, some imaging-based biomarkers have been identified with to be related to the progression of the Parkinson's disease. So, through our work, we can detect discriminative uh, patterns to from neuroimaging data to classify the early stage PD cases and health controls because it's not an easy problem because early stage PD cases and the health controls they are pretty similar. Uh, the data we use is from PBMI dataset. PBMI stands for Parkinson Progression uh, Markers Initiative. This dataset is a multi-institutional effort uh, by Michael G. Fox Foundation, and uh, it's a comprehensive dataset. It includes uh, 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 clinical studies data or genomics data and uh, neural imaging data. For this work, we we'll mainly really use the MRI and the DTI image data from the dataset. So actually, uh, many computational approaches have been developed for neuroimage analysis, and, but most of them are linear or multilinear. The uh, most of them uh, uh, focus on the single modality of the data, and uh, you know it's not sufficient for for these models to expl to explore the neuroimage data thoroughly. So in this scenario, we propose the MVGCN, which is multi-view graph convolution network. And uh, in our work, the setting for the multi-view is like because we leveraged uh, the MRI data and DTI data simultaneously, and the MRI and the DTI they describe the same brain from different angles, uh, which is like the multi-view setting in our model. So before we go to the methodology. Uh, we need to first construct the graph for the problem set in our work. Uh, actually, we use the uh, software called FreeSurfer to parcel the MRI image data to a set of regional interests, which is ROI. And uh, each MRI image is parceled into 84 ROIs. And we can also capture the geometric coordinates of the ROIs from MRI image data. Uh, each ROI uh, in the, uh, in the, from the ROI image data can be treated as a node in the graph. We call this graph brain geometry graph. And the assumption here is that if two nodes or if two ROIs they are geometrically nearby, they may have a similar activity in the brain. This is how we construct a BGG from the MRI image data. So after the BGG construction, we also use the DTI image data to construct another graph called brain connectivity graph. DTI image data can encode the information of connectivity between peer-wise regional interests in the brain. And each, uh, actually each acquisition can have a different BCG using a different type of tractographer algorithm. So tractography is a 3D modeling technique used to visually represent the uh, nerve tracts using data collected by the diffusion MRI. And this is how we process the DTI image data. So after we construct the graphs, we go to the, this is overview of our study. Uh, you can see from the upper image, uh, you can see the overall workflow Suppose, uh, 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 imagine you have two acquisitions, and after the MVGCM processing, uh, you will get two feature matrices. Uh, this, this feature matrices are the representations of the uh, acquisitions. And then we perform row-wise inner product matching to calculate the similarity between these two matrices to decide whether these two acquisitions are matching or not matching, or they belong to the same group or not. This is called peer-wise learning in our, uh, in, our, in our study. Because we, we perform peer-wise learning is, is, is because peer-wise learning can increase the sample sizes for our model training. Because if we perform sample level prediction, you know, the size will be, uh, training, training sample size will be pretty limited. 
which is not uh, sufficient for uh, uh, the deep learning model training. So uh, after the overall workflow, the lower image is the detailed implementation of our proposed model called MVGCN. So imagine you have um, an acquisition and M different tractography chromosomes. So you will have M different BCGs from the DTI data. And also you have the BGG, right? I uh, created earlier. So now you have both BCG from DTI, which is the representations of the region of interest, and the BGG from the MRI image data, which characterize the connectivity between pairwise region of interest. You, you feed them together into the GCN and uh, you will get a feature matrix which is the representation of the BCGs. So uh, because you have M different BCGs, right? Uh, so you will have M different feature matrices here. So after, uh, after the, you get M different feature matrices, you want to aggregate them together. So here we perform a pooling operation to integrate those, uh, inter, uh, those in feature matrices to a final feature matrix, which is the representation of the acquisition. So this is overall overflow and the overview of the study. And this is the basic components in the proposed model. Uh, there are actually four components, including the graph convolution network, which is JCN, and the view pooling operation, and also the pairwise matching, and then the last one is objective function, which is for uh, optimization of the model. The definition of BCGs and BGGs that are, uh, have been introduced earlier. Uh, oh, this is the detailed implementation of the first component, graph convolution network. Uh, as I said, you now have the BCG from DTI data and also the BGG from the RMI data. So you input them together to the GCN and after the first layer, you get uh, representations of the region of interest. And then the region of interest representation is fed into a next layer, so layer by layer, until you get the final matrix, which is the representation of the BCG. This is an illustration of two layer GCN, GCNs here. And uh, after this, uh, oh, this is a detailed, detailed implementation of the uh, graph construction, uh, such as BGG. So suppose we have a population of M acquisitions. So coordinates are com uh, or coordinates of the region of interest are computed by the uh, average coordinates of, of the specific region of interest in, in each acquisition. So the coordinates for the ROI is the uh, average one. And uh, the edge weights between pairwise ROI can be constructed by the Gaussian, weight, Gaussian weighted uh, Euclidean distances. So the, the clo uh, uh, as I said, the assumption is that the closer the distance, the larger the weight. Uh, after you get the uh, feature matrix from the GCN output, you will have M different feature matrices, which are the representations of, the, uh, of, 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 of these views. And then you perform a pooling operation. Here we perform the both max pooling operation and the mean pooling operation. And we found that max of pooling operation performs better in our model. And uh, um, after you get the final feature matrix after the pooling operation, this feature matrix represents the uh, acquisition uh, for each acquisition. So now you have two feature matrix, uh, uh, which means you have two uh, acquisitions here. And we perform raw wise inner product matching, which is a uh, classical way to calculate the similarity between uh, uh, between the feature matrix and then you will get a pairwise feature vector which uh, holds the uh, similarity of each region of interest. This is the objective function for the optimization in our model as uh, a cross entropy uh, function. Uh, it's more about the mathematics stuff. Uh, oh, after the detailed implementation of the model. Uh, this is an overview of our data set, PBMI. As I said, if we perform sample lab prediction, the number of the PD subjects you can see here is only like 600, and the number of HC subjects is like, is 158. So it's not sufficient, right? So uh, we transfer the sample lab prediction to the pairwise learning. So the set the, it, which uh, largely increases the, the training sample sizes. 
And uh, we also construct six types of VCGs <coughs> for each subject using six whole different tractography algorithms. So we have six views here. This is our promising results. The first table describes the performance of the models on the uh, single modality. You can see no matter on which single modality, the graph convolution network always outperforms the conventional deep learning methods like a uh, uh, fully connected neural network and also the convention, uh, traditional methods principal component analysis and the raw edges. The table two here uh, describes that the performance of the multi-view graph convolution network can can be better than the performance of the GCN on the single modality if we perform the MVGCN on the multiple modalities. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So we can hear, we can see that the GCN and MVGCN here can uh, can dominate other uh, other traditional algorithms here. Uh, this is the visualization of the learned similarity. The first is the visualization of the principal component analysis. Uh, you can see that there are many, uh, there are much overlap between the PD group and the health control group. And the second is the fully connected neural, uh, neural network. Uh, there, are, there are also some, like, uh, uh, to a less extent, there are also some uh, overlaps. But for the method, methodology we proposed, the MVGCN, the health controls and the Parkinson's disease patients, they are separate, per, separated perfectly. And this is another interesting result of our uh, uh, study. Uh, this is an interpretation of the learned similarity for the regional interests. So as I said, we calculate the similarity score for each regional interest. So we rank them using the magnitude of the score and we found the top 10 dissimilar regional interests between the PD group and the healthy control group. So here are the, uh, the right, uh, the, ten, uh, the top 10 dissimilar uh, regional interests are listed in the right. So I also listed some uh, clinical references here. Uh, it support our finding that from the ref first reference, uh, it, said, it suggests that there are, uh, they detected disease related abnormalities in the Paladin, the first ROI, the, the, in the county, the, the sixth ROI, and the Pudiman, the, the, the number eight. And also, the number two amygdala here, it, it explains the uh, depression underlies the uh, PD uh, mechanisms. And also, the third, parsobitalis. This, takes, uh, this ROI takes charge of the language processing. <laughs> and uh, which also indicate a difference between the PE group and the health control group in the voice. And also the number six and number eight, Caldet and Pudiman, they've been identified to take charge of the motor symptom, uh, the motor functions in the body. Uh, these these uh, regional interests indicate the differences in many aspects, in like motor, non motor depression, or cognitive decline. Uh, between the PD case groups and the health control groups. So to summarize our work, uh, we developed a new methodology called MVGCM, which can be used to accurately discriminate early stage PD cases and health controls. And also, the interpretability of the learned high level representations through MVGCM are explored. Our findings from, uh, findings from our study are consistent with the uh, results from the clinical literatures. Uh, for future work, because we only use the MRI, uh, we, on, we haven't used like MRI T1 feature and the clinical records or the genomics, we may uh, embed them in the future analysis. And also we are exploring to, excuse me, we're also exploring to subtype the PD patients with neural image data. Thank you. Uh, any question? Oh. What do you make of the sidedness, like left amygdala, amygdala right column? Does oh. that make sense like, from an anatomical functional perspective, or do you think it was just, it picked one or the other just because they're very, like, very collinear? 
uh, for those uh, we checked a lot of papers and we found like you know, numerous like uh, uh, evidence for to support our finding, but we uh, we uh, we have the report like eight.